Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is good to see your smiling faces. The order of service today is printed in the worship book. We'll sing the hymns exactly as they're printed. And communion this morning is by intention. The ushers will usher you forward down the center aisle. Receive the wafer, dip it into the red wine or the white grape juice. Eat it and then return to your seats using the side aisle. If you prefer a gluten-free wafer, come to my station, wherever I am, because I have I am the bearer of gluten-free. Um, so feel free to do that, but come move whatever side you need to be on. This is the Lord's table, and the Lord invites all to come and dine at it this morning. We're excited today because not only do we get to um, experience the rite of confirmation with Austin and Ruby as part of this service. They will renew their baptismal covenant, but at the same time we get to hear their faith papers this morning. And if they screw up their faith paper, they won't be getting confirmed later <laughs> in the service. Just saying. <laughs> so far they've done everything right. They've got their flowers on the same side. They're sitting where they were told to sit. Um, I think we might make it. Um, do the service with them, so we're glad that you're here. There will be at the center doors immediately after the service for you to congratulate as you depart from the sanctuary, and then immediately after everybody's out of the sanctuary, we're going to come back in and take some pictures. So if you're part of the picture-taking crew, come on back in. Um, and then after that, I will lead adult Bible study in the fellowship room. Sunday school will sing, probably, in here. So Sunday school kids will come in here to do music before they go off to their classes. And then later after that is um, senior, not senior, um, single, single seniors, you know. Um, singles get together for lunch today and going to Watertown. If you haven't talked to Gail Langer about going, talk to her um, this morning. A couple of other things to bring to your attention. The food pantry is in need of some new volunteers. This might be your chance to serve in a, in a ministry where you've never done that before. The phone number for Gretchen is listed in the, in the book, in the bulletin, um, worship book. Please uh, give her a call and see if you could be one of those volunteers. In November, the second weekend of November, our monthly collection weekend, we'll be collecting hot cereal for the food pantry. And I do want to tell you that when you bring your cereal, do not bring it hot. Bring cold cereal that will be made hot. Because somebody will call me and ask me that question, okay? How do I get it there and keep it hot? Okay. I bet none you, Lisa. Chop Todd. And Dean, uh, Gretchen is going to be gone for about three weeks, so maybe if people would want to volunteer, they should call it. Todd, stand up. Nope. Talk to Todd if you want to volunteer in the food bed. Does everybody see Todd there? Okay. All right. Good. All right. So that we got that fixed. All right. Todd will be glad to sign you up. Um, thanks, Todd. Okay. So cold, hot cereal, but make it cold. Um, senior bus trip, Chris has got a few more spots for the senior bus trip. We're decorating the sanctuary for those who choose to decorate with cyclamen this year, red and white. You can order those um, on the order form. Remember, if you're going to do that, the order is going to be put in on November 13th, so that's only a couple weeks away. And then um, the annual, and by the way, with that, you can also purchase evergreens. When you purchase evergreens, it goes toward the Christmas tree or multiple Christmas trees, whatever we put up in here. The other thing that will be happening during Advent is we'll be collecting items for the Healing House, which is a new ministry in Madison. It's a home at um, First Congregational United Church of Christ that's, that they actually own. It's being converted into a homeless shelter, a, a shelter for homeless people who have been released from the hospital but now need medical treatment. So instead of having to go to Salvation Army and stay overnight or the new beacon during the day and then have to get to chemotherapy or radiation treatments or physical therapy and things from the shelter, they will have a home. Those folks who could be released from the hospital and placed at the, and go to the healing house during their treatment. So it's, it's a very significant need that we have in Madison. Uh, the model is based on a model that's being used in Cincinnati, Ohio, so it's been done before, just the way we're going to be doing it here in Madison. So during Advent, we're going to be collecting new adult and children's books for a library and healing house, new kitchenware and, and towels and washcloths and all that kind of stuff for the kitchen, things for kids like sippy cups and plastic cups and things like that. You'll see a list coming soon, but just so you know, that will be our Advent collection. 
And then Thanksgiving dinner is right around the corner, and it is right around the corner, both in time and in preparation. Bob Mormon and Sandy Rupno are working on things for Thanksgiving dinner, because remember, for like 38 years, we've served about um, 300 meals on Thanksgiving Day at noon. So the back page of your bulletin shows all kinds of ways that you can help with that dinner. And it does not happen unless everybody pitches in and helps. It's just impossible to serve that meal with all that home-cooked food um, and all the labor that needs to be involved unless people sign up and offer themselves and their food to, to make it happen. So take a look at that and see how you can help um, once again with that very important ministry. Tomorrow we uh, eat at 11 a.m. the senior lunch folks. Thank you choir for singing this morning. Was there anything else that I was supposed to say? Okay, give your mic. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Well then, I will be quiet. I invite you to make sure that your electronics are all shut off and that you shut your mouths. Um, I don't, you know, most guests are okay, but Chris maybe. Okay. Um, I'm not putting anybody on. Okay, um, just make sure your mouths are shut and your electronics are off, and we'll prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prayer. <laughs> Please rise for the hymn and just a reminder that the refrain, re refrain repeats.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As John comes forward for the reading, the congregation may be seated. Today's reading is from 1 Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and love of, and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that God has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for God's Son from heaven, who was raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming.
Okay, Ruby and Austin, you're on while you're coming forward and fighting over who gets to go first. I would just help inform the congregation that each year, after two years of confirmation study, one year looking at Luther's small catechism and the other year looking at biblical texts, our ninth graders who are being confirmed have the great opportunity to put their thoughts about their own personal faith together and present you a paper that is supposed to be three minutes in length, 14 point font, double spaced, and three pages. Okay? Anybody screw that part up? A sentence over three pages? <laughs> Just go to the mic. <laughs> so this morning, um, we decided to combine what we do on, uh, usually do on one Sunday and then have confirmation service on the next Sunday. We decided to combine it so you're here to hear the whole shebang. So I guess Ruby's going to begin. Make sure that the microphone's in front of your face and that you speak loudly and slowly so we can see you and hear you. We can see you but hear you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. To me, having faith in God means that there is a spirit that created heaven and earth and has forgiveness of our sins. Faith is believing without actually being able to visually see God. We see the goodness of God in many things in our lives, but sometimes we have difficulties recognizing this is God's work. The Bible tells us that God has done many miraculous things, like found in Matthew Chapter 5, verse 5. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleaned, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. But sometimes it is hard to see signs of God's goodness in our modern world. I feel that faith is trying our hardest to show kindness whenever possible to a world that often lacks it, to portray what God wants for humanity. This is my perspective on faith because of all the mission trips that I've gone on. I feel that we have all have mistakes in our lives, but if we attempt to make other people's lives better, we have done what God wishes, wishes we would do. To me, the phrase, my faith has saved me, is interpreted as me trying to keep my morals and not conforming to the negativity of the world. My faith helps me keep an open mind to other people's struggles and hardships. My th faith has given me the push to try to be a kind person, even when others test my patience. <coughs> Pastor Dean. <laughs> Although many people have helped me shape my faith, there are two I'd like to credit the most. First of all, I felt that Amy Lupke has helped me see God in, on our mission trips. I think it is amazing she uses her free time to show the work of God, and she can stand dealing with a bunch of high schoolers <laughs> for a week. She shows, us, she shows kindness to all types of people, and I feel that is truly admirable. I hope that through time I will be able to show, have enough desk. I hope that I will be able to have the self-discipline that she has to give up time and continue to show my faith. I also feel there is credit to be given to Pastor Dean. I know, he's such a bully. What would he have taught me about faith in God? Well, apparently a lot. I really have a lot of respect for him. I feel like he shows God's work in an absolutely amazing way. He shows it to everyone he can and uses his humor to bring different types of people together. I also really respect the fact that he has been able to maintain his faith through the hardships he has had to endure, in, despite the unfairness of it all. I hope that if I am ever faced with something as unbearable, I will be able to overcome it with my faith as he has done. I, hope, I would also like to thank the church, the whole church, though. It is comforting to me to have a, faith, a place full of kind, accepting people with a common cause. I appreciate the support you all have given Austin and I through our confirmation experience. When I was younger, I used to question my faith due to not understanding why God allows things to happen if he is all pure and good. I didn't understand why Jesus had to be crucified. All these thoughts put a halt on my believing, but thankfully I had people to help me guide me through that, guide me out of this. I remember the moment when I really started having faith was after a confirmation lesson where I learned about the night before the crucifixion. I remember almost interrogating Nate Campbell with all my doubts and him guiding me through it all, me through all of it with reason. I was so grateful for that, and afterwards, I felt myself being able to become more of a believer. I learned the reason that God ha had to allow Jesus to be crucified and how it all ties in with the purity of God. One Bible verse that reminds me of this lesson was Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and he said to them, "Go into the world and proclaim the gospel." to the whole creation. Whoever believes is, and is baptized will be saved, but whoever 
does not believe will be condemned. This shows that all the forgiveness, this shows all the forgiveness that we have been able to be given because of Jesus' sacrifice. I show this belief now in the community in many ways. I try to keep a mindset that makes me stay open to people's differing views. I do work to help those that are in need when I can. And mostly I try to not be selfish and to help others. I try to show those I have faith by being kind and helpful whenever possible. I'm not the believer that runs around screaming, God is great, he is pure. I feel that everyone has a right to their own beliefs. By confirming my baptism, I'll be showing that I have faith in God and I long to continue showing God's work in our world and that I still want to be part of the church. I will try to continue doing good work to a world and show my faith. I hope that I will be able to stay as dedicated to my religion as many of you members of Lakeview Lutheran Church. God means believing in something larger than, than just going to church every Sunday and reading the Bible. Faith in God means that you trust in God. God is a very close friend, maybe even your best friend. I've been taught this through my many years at Lakeview, whether it be confirmation class, Sunday school, mission trips, even the Green Lake retreat. When I thought of someone saying, my faith has saved me, I always wanted to ask, well, how so? But from those experiences, I understand what they would mean by that. If it weren't for my experiences at Lakeview, I'm not exactly sure that I would be here presenting this paper to you all right now. In a way, I believe my faith saved me by allowing me to participate in experiences that helped and continues to help me uh, grow as a functioning member of society. And more importantly, be an engaged member in the Lutheran community. When I think about how my faith shaped me, I think back to last September, when I was involved in a biking accident on my way to school one morning. It was during the recovery of, the recovery of this incident when I found myself praying that I wouldn't need surgery. When the day came and I found out that I would indeed need surgery, I was mad at God. How could you do this to me? What have I done wrong? This was the beginning of a questioning. I questioned whether or not God actually existed. And if he is some important figure, why wouldn't he help me in this time of need? But soon enough, marching band season was just around the corner. I was absolutely terrified that I wouldn't be able to march this coming summer. And I would have to sit at home. However, things started to change for the better. My injured wrist began to heal, and before I could even think, I found myself at the first band camp of the season. And to this day, I thank God that he let me do what I love most this summer. Today, I will be asked, do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in baptism, which is to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim good news of, in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? And my response to this is, but I definitely do intend to continue in the covenant God made with me when I was baptized. I will fight for a peaceful world, regardless of those who may not agree with my viewpoints. I intend to spread the word of God in a way that others will view me as respectful and warm-hearted. I intend to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. I intend to serve all people according to their needs and wishes, by helping my community in any way I can, volunteering at a local food pantry, helping those less fortunate than I, even by just participating in church, I can carry out this promise. I often think of the words, for nothing will be impossible with God, from Luke 1, chapter 1, verse 37. And when I do think of these words, they reassure me that as long as I have faith and trust in God and his abilities, I will be saved. I trust in his plan of action. Another Bible verse I think about frequently is I will walk by faith even, even when I cannot see. From 2 Corinthians. <clears throat> I can imagine myself however many years from now, still trusting in God's plan because of the lessons I've been taught from the people around me and lessons from my own personal life. Many times in life, you have to walk into situations blindly and know in your heart that God will guide you. I often think about one other verse when I think of my faith. Faith is the confidence that we, will, that we hope for, that we hopeful will eventually actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. From Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. This verse tells me how I view my, how I view my faith. It tells me that no matter how far-fetched an idea of some man in the sky may be, I can trust it. I can trust in it due to my past experiences. With so many people influencing my faith, it's hard to depict just a few. But what I guess I could say that I but I guess I could say that everyone I come into contact with shapes my faith, whether it's a positive experience or a negative experience. But one person who really stands out in my mind is Pastor G. 
I know it's maybe a common response for a lot of people here right now, but I mean, who else do you know that's as crazy, funny, smart, and I use that term loosely, as him? Exactly. <laughs> Nobody. When I think back to my years spent at Lakeview, I realize that this place is almost like a second home. The people in this congregation make you feel so loved, even if you've never met before. I know now that I would not trade these past years for anything. Thank you. I only make them do this if they promise to give me accolades. Okay, you two can go sit down. Thank you. And Ruby's wearing the appropriate length dress that I would appreciate. That. I don't really have a lot to add, but I put my reflection after them in case I had to clean up a mess that they made. I don't really have to because I think they've pre presented you with, with some wonderful ideas and information to think about your own faith. And that's what we do here today. And as you think of your own faith, there's a second step for us. If we look at that reading that John read from the first letter to the Thessalonians, which, by the way, is the very first recorded writings in the New Testament, that letter to the first Thessalonians. In that letter, Paul has already visited the people of Thessalonica, and he's showed them, he's taught them and preached to them about Jesus. He showed them how to live a life of being faithful to Christ, which, which Ruby and Austin have just talked about. But then Paul does one other thing in that lesson, and that's what I challenge you, all of us, with today. Paul says, people of Thessalonica, you imitate me. We imitate those who share their faith with us. So here's your challenge. Will people imitate you? Will people look at you and see your life as being so faithful that they want to live like you live? Will they go out and carry on your message of the gospel through your words and through your actions and through the things you do and the way you live? Will other people look at us, me, you, all of us, and want to live a life of faith just like that? Will they be imitators of you? the way that Paul is asking the people of Thessalonica to be imitators of him, and the way he was an imitator to Jesus Christ. So you get to depart today, after hearing some excellent presentations by Ruby and Austin, and then contemplate how you're living your life, and who you might be influencing. I invite you to rise as we sing the hymn that Austin has already quoted from Corinthians, We Walk by Faith. Please rest.
Let me know if you touch it. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for Ruby and Austin, who you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of heaven. Uphold your servants in this gift, in the gifts and promise of baptism, and unite the hearts of all of whom you have brought to new faith. We ask this in the name of the Christ. Amen. I should just mention that confirmation is an affirmation of the vows and promises made in baptism. I was fortunate enough to baptize both of these individuals, Austin, a few years ago, many years ago. I don't know why, you know what year? No, I really don't remember. <laughs> Austin, many years ago. Ruby, last night. So I do remember her. She, her hair is actually still wet. <laughs> now, Ruby and Austin. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith's faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? <laughs> If so, I renounce them. I now invite you, and I know you're looking forward to this part, I invite you to profess your faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Stir up in Austin the gift of your Holy Spirit, Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Ruby, Lord, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. And we pray. 
give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and light, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. The peace of that Lord be with you all. Please rise and as Ruby and, and whatever his name is, Austin, return to their seat. Share God's peace with one another. and for all people according to their needs. Great God, we give thanks for the gift of faith and for the people and situations that enter our lives to help us strengthen that faith. May the church always be honest in its proclamation of the gospel of your faithful love. We are grateful for your gift of baptism and the presence of your Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Bless Heather and Ruby as they begin a life of walking wet this weekend. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Great God, watch over our youth and use each of us to keep them secure and healthy. Come to Ruby and Austin and their families as they affirm their faith this morning. May the members of this congregation wrap them in our love and support as they continue a life in the Lakeview congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Great God, there are many destructive elements in the world, and we ask you to open our eyes to see ways we can work to end the things that generate human oppression. Give us the will to face <coughs> hunger and homelessness, and to adjust our lives to reduce climate change. Make us wise to use the tools you have given us to end racism, anti-Semitism, bigotry, and hate in all its forms. Guide our society to end sex trafficking in the world and in our state and here in Madison. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Great God, bring hope to the people where wildfires have burned, where typhoon land has provided destruction, and in Puerto Rico where water, electricity, gas, and medical care are still scarce. Move us to help as we can. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Great God, comfort all who grieve. Heal all in need of your healing touch, including Twyla, Stephen, Aaron, and anyone we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we receive the morning offer. <laughs>
please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts and turn to God. We give thanks to God. Continue with the words of institution. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, eat. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Come and eat. The meal is ready. Ellie, I would ask that you come to the altar to serve me. The congregation may be seated, and for service, additional service may come to the room. <laughs>
Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very son, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice, may we thirst for your way of peace, for you are Lord forevermore. Amen. May God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Sing the closing hymn as we stand, and a reminder that it repeats.